So that's my uncle Howard. White. <laughs> <laughs> So that's my cousin, Audra right there, and her husband. And she, he, Howie must be a good guy, because she married a guy named Howie. Mm. <laughs> so I'm delighted. We're going to sit down now. I'm going to introduce the ambassador. We all know the president of the congregation. I've asked him to be very nice today. So please, thank you all for coming and sharing your time with me. Thank you. Thank you. Ambassador for Danish Navidia is from Ethiopia to Chicago and she's back again for a visit. She used to work here at the Israeli consulate in the Midwest region many years ago. That is indeed when we met. We did some programming at Kennedy King College and a couple of other events. When she got married some years, a few years after that, she invited Rabbi Eaton out to the wedding, uh, but we were out of town. And so I sent representatives uh, to her wedding uh, in the presence of Danielle Yosef, Rabbi Joshua Salter's father, and Sister Hadessa Isakar. So they went to represent Rabbi Eaton and myself at her wedding. But since that time, she's a diplomat, she worked in uh, Houston for the Israeli um, diplomatic agency there, but now she is the Israeli ambassador to Ethiopia, her home country. She is the first immigrant from Ethiopia to Israel to serve as an Israeli ambassador. She's born in Anambara, Ethiopia. I won't give the year, but it's earlier than the majority of the people in this room. Her family immigrated to Israel when she was 17 years old. She served as a deputy consul general in Chicago at the Consul General of Israel to the Midwest from 1997 until 2002. Ambassador Zavidia was Israel's foreign ministry first cadet to Ethiopian descent. She also has worked for a Meshava, she'll explain that to us, Israel's humanitarian branch of the Israel Aid Division. And she, the ambassador has a master's degree in African Studies and International Relations, and she joined the ministry's Cadet Corps in 1993, the first cadet of Ethiopian descent. Uh, she was a graduate of Hebrew University, and she also served the Israeli government in Houston, Texas uh, for some time. And I am honored and privileged to, just for all of us to give her a hearty Baruch Hava and to welcome her. <laughs> to a namesake congregation. Best of all in their pockets. Ethiopian Hebrew community. So let me say to you and to the ambassador for certain that this congregation was founded in 1918. And it was founded as the Congregation of Ethiopian Hebrews. And our the rabbi that immediately preceded my tenure as rabbi served the community, Rabbi Agahu Rubin, from 1947 until he passed away. And Rabbi Rubin passed away in 1999. As a matter of fact, this month is his dark cycle because he passed away on February, I think it was the 5th of 1991. At that time, the congregation elevated me to this position of spiritual leader of Beth Shalom Ben Ezzakin. Well, we weren't even Ben Ezzakin at that time. We were simply Beth Shalom Ethiopian Hebrew Congregation because we have always been Ethiopian Hebrew. In 1930, one of our founding rabbis, Rabbi Arnold Yesiah Ford, immigrated to Ethiopia 
Act 1930. As a matter of fact, he and the group that were with him performed for the inauguration and coordination of uh, King Haile Selassie as he was, Emperor Haile Selassie, as he was elevated to the throne of the Ethiopian kingdom, the house of Judah, in 1930. So he, Rabbi Ford, passed away in Ethiopia in 1935. It was a year before uh, Mussolini invaded Ethiopia in 1936. His two sons were educated in Ethiopia, and they are both serving, I don't know if you know them, but they've served as professors of history at Howard University in Washington, D.C. And one of our early teachers was brought from Ethiopia to America. His name was Helu Paris. He was my teacher. He was wrapped up in a blanket with a Sefer Torah. And when the Nazis stopped their ship, they were looking for Jews, but they weren't looking for African Jews. Right. Mm -hmm. And so Rabbi Helu Paris and the family that adopted him and others of our community made their way back to America from Ethiopia after the Italians invaded Ethiopia. So I to say to you that the role that Ethiopia plays in the history of our congregation, I cannot tell you the number of men who wanted to volunteer to serve in Ethiopia when the Italians invaded Ethiopia in 1936. So you are home, and you are here amongst brothers and sisters of all stripes. Amen. Because we know, as my dear friend, Dr. Ephraim Isaac Toff, you know him, many years ago, the joke, the joke is God came back to visit the earth. And they took God over all these places. And he's in this plane, and God says, oh, what's that? And they said, God. That's Paris, that's the Eiffel Tower. Then he took God, he says, what is that? He said, oh God, that's Big Ben, that's the Tower of London. So I said, oh, didn't know. Then he flew over Africa. And God looked down and said, ah, Ethiopia, just as I left it. <laughs> and you people used to tell that joke <clears throat> as a put down of Africa. But I say, and this is from my friend and my teacher, Dr. Brian Isaac, that God saw, if you look at Ethiopia from a topographical area, Ethiopia is shaped like a womb. And it is indeed the womb of humanity. And from it, all humans, have sprung forth into existence. And so to have the Ethiopian ambassador from Ethiopia to Ethiopia in Beth Shalom Ethiopian Hebrew congregation is an honor. And so I want to start with you, Ambassador, by asking a couple of hard questions. 